More now on the changes coming to the top of Google. Larry Page takes over as CEO today, and our next guest was Page's dissertation advisor at Stanford University. He's the one who told Page to pursue his dream of making Google a reality. Page says it was the best advice he ever got. We're joined now by Terry Winograd, a professor out at Stanford. And I know you also worked at Google for about 18 months back in 2002. Knowing the company, knowing Larry Page as you do, does he view Google as an advertising company? So many on Wall Street do. I think Larry views it as an opportunity to do really interesting and useful things, and the advertising pays for it. I think if you said, would you like to turn it into a conventional advertising company and make more money, he'd say, no, not at all. Right. Well, the reason that Wall Street comes back to that question is they're always looking for profitability from a public company. Can Larry Page, he's an innovator, he's clearly you know, a genius here, but is he someone who shareholders can look to to continue to grow their value as shareholders? I think what they can look to him to do is keep trying new things, not to get stuck, not to get following down a track and forget things. He's, he's the kind of student you really love to teach because he'd, he'd bring in a new idea, you'd talk about it some, and he'd go off and carry it on further. And I don't think Google is going to be static. I think he's going to really try new things. Uh, and of course, if it's profitable, that's great. Mm -hmm. And it comes when you're the creator and you're the innovator and you're the CEO, there's such an emotional tie to the decisions that you're making. I mean. How much weight does he bring to those day-to-day -day businesses that he is going to invest in versus the ones that might actually be the most profitable and under the Google umbrella? I think he's unusual in really being able to try something out, see if it works, and then if it doesn't, really take the feedback and give it up. He's not the kind of person who says, that was my idea, we've got to go with it no matter what. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think you'll see flexibility. Um, which things he chooses, I can't predict. Right. Well, I guess get, that's why I was asking you about whether he views it as an advertising company or not. Do you think that he would allow uh, more divisions of the companies to exist outside of uh, the Google management? Well, they've introduced, you know, they brought in various companies over time, and some of them have remained fairly independent in terms of their management. I think he wants everything to be coordinated. I don't think right. it would be outside in the sense of a completely separate subsidiary, uh, but I think he wants to give people room to, leg room to sort of do what they're doing if they're doing it well. You know, I was just out in Silicon Valley talking to a, a number of uh, people starting up businesses, and they were saying, you know, you used to have Google on your resume, and it was a sure thing. Anyone and everyone wanted to hire you. But now it's so vibrant in terms of the startup community that it's almost a disadvantage because a new company views you as someone they have to retrain, sort of break the Google mindset. Is that something you're seeing from the students that you're currently teaching and graduating? I'm not seeing any downturn. When I, when I talk to students who are graduating, Google is right at the top of their list of where they'd like to go. Not, mm -hmm. you know, some of them go to Facebook, some of them go even you know, Microsoft, who knows, IBM. But uh, they still see it as a real opportunity to build their skills. I think the one thing is because they can then assume they'll be working with peers, with a really interesting group of smart people, and that's what makes people work well. Mm -hmm. And do you steer more and more of your students towards Google, or are you, as you mentioned in there, Facebook and others who are, are named as potential competitors? Are you seeing more interest along those lines? I think it's spreading out. I mean, it used to be that it was sort of the only show in town that was interesting in that way, and now there's a lot of opportunities. It's the penalty of success. Once people start copying what you're doing, then you're no longer as unique. And I think that over time, we're going to see lots and lots of places coming up. Mm -hmm. And where do you see the, the most growth? Is it still going to be along social media? I mean, do you think that Google needs to play catch up there? I think Google's going to try to get into that area. I don't think they want to replace Facebook. I think that the kind of audience, the kind of uh, ambiance that Facebook has is not what Google has. Uh, on the other hand, this is true in reverse, too. You're not going to go to Facebook to try to buy things and search things and so on. So I think because Google got there so early with so much, it was sort of, that's the web. And now the web is beginning to diversify, and you've got different forces doing different things, and it'll be a larger ecology. Yeah, they don't own the ecology anymore, in other words. Right. Nobody can. <laughs>
Everybody can. Well, as, as we introduced you, you gave Larry Page the best advice he's ever gotten. So I'm sure uh, your advice and your insight uh, he'd love to, to get now. Are you going to, to speak with him? I mean, do you still advise him in any role? I don't have a regular role. I see him occasionally. We just had a nice event for our 20th anniversary of our program here at Stanford, and he came and gave a talk, and we chatted some. But it's, it's informal. It's informal. All right. Terry, thank you so much for joining us.